Welcome to Future Role Model, a podcast that praises the unconventional and redefines what it means to role mo- be a role model. I can't talk today. Uh, in the house, just walked in. You've had a crazy morning. Camilla Cleese. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Not feeling like a role model today. That's good. That's actually <laughs> perfect for this. Uh, <laughs> What's happening? I'm a hot mess. What um, happened today? I've had a weird morning. Uh, my dog fell down the stairs, and it was my fault. It made me feel terrible. Like I how did, almost how does that happen? Well, the stairs are big, and he's tiny, and I didn't see him. I was carrying a box, and like he fell down, and I, I thought that I... I mean, he was fine. I just panicked. Because right. Because literally the one thing in my life that I like truly care about anymore. Your dog? <laughs> yeah, it's horrible to say. Because, they, well, they don't shit on you like people do. No, they're, they're <laughs> s- I, I don't know, it's just so much less complicated. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they love you no matter what, and like, I always know where he is, and... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. I haven't, I was just thinking that the other day because my, one of my friend rescues cats. I've never been much of a cat person Uh and she's got four of them right now and she's like a good cat owner. So it's not like stinky cats. Right. Cause I feel like a lot of times when people are cat people, you're like, what the fuck? Their apartment smells like piss. It Um, smells like a litter box. (laughs) Like rarely is somebody (laughs) a cat owner and they do it right. Um, but she's, she does uh, cat rescue and she's got one right now that she's just holding to uh for adoption and i'm obsessed with him and i kind of i've never had an animal as an adult my really? family's always had animals i grew up with animals but as an adult i've always been so busy and hustly and i've never had right. like made time for an animal it is it, it's hard i mean i think being single again it's like a lifesaver because yeah i, I mean i love my dog so much, a little too much. Yeah. Like, it's not <laughs> super healthy. It's a little dependency uh, issue. Yeah. But he is an emotional support animal, although I think I'm his emotional support animal more than vice versa. But regardless. Um, does he travel with you? He does. Oh, yeah. cool. He comes on the tour bus when we have a bus. Uh, he came to Canada on tour because my dad told me we had a bus and I should have thought about how big of a country Canada is <laughs> that, that wasn't gonna be feasible yeah and long story short I had to fly back anyway for some theater gigs that I booked before my dad asked me to tour that time and like um he actually comes on stage too mm-hmm. like we just let him come on as he pleases because it's like free laughs yeah everyone's like what the hell oh <laughs> Where yeah did it come yeah from? yeah <laughs> um the first time is an accident but now we're just like we'll just let him do it as long yeah. as he wants and, you know, and to, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Camilla's dad is John, John Cleese. As far as I know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and which is one, of, I feel like nobody doesn't like him as an actor. Um, <laughs> if you follow him on Twitter, you might be a little might. put off lately. I should never have taught that man to use Twitter. Oh, um, no. He's ruining my life. Oh, David. no. He tweeted about my breakup. Why? Like, and all of his followers were like, like, I'm sorry, did you mean to tweet that? Because he's just like... What did he say? Uh, he he ba- said something like, Joe and Victoria are horrible people. <laughs> or something. <laughs> like, something completely... Like, to anyone that doesn't know what he's talking about, it was like, what? Yeah. Even I, someone... Only one person that... Because I didn't really publicize the breakup. Well, apparently you could tell from some of my tweets, because there were there were some breakup related tweets, but right. they were just like, you know, I think I said something like, uh, I'm actually really good at breakups. Like it's just the whole telling the other person part that I have trouble <laughs> with. <laughs> Cause it's so true. Like it, it'll be over in my head and then I just can't. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. Like w- women do that though. I think we, we make up our mind way before we actually break up. With somebody, I feel like that makes it a little bit, e- like, we already grieve in advance a little bit. Sometimes to the person, even. Mm-hmm. Like, I've found myself, like, misdirecting the sadness and whatever. Um, anyway, it, it it was pretty funny, because my one friend that knew what those names meant called and was like, I'm like, oh, my God, Dad, please stop. <laughs> yeah, so it basically got me blacklisted from Netflix. What? He got me trolled by, like, 60,000 people. I, like, he just doesn't understand. 
I think in his mind, Twitter is like if you like mumble something under your breath to a friend, but he has six million followers. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty well known. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't make it go away. Yeah. Like if you tweet anything. Yeah. And everybody like, sees it, screenshots it. His language can be a little antiquated and like he just says shit all the time that I'm like, oh my God, please. So God. what was it like growing up around him or in that household? Because he was already... You know, how old were you when he started getting his, his notoriety with... Oh, he was, like, way... I mean, probably at the peak of his fame, like, when I was about four. Yeah, so that's was, what I thought. You were young. when I before I was born. Um, but especially in the UK, I mean, there he's still, like, a national treasure. Like treasure, yeah. Which is kind of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird. It's got to be interesting in some ways, though, too. I mean... It, it is. It's a. I never knew it wasn't normal until I was an adult. You mm-hmm. know, because uh, my mom was on TV too. Like she was a actress ish and like a newscaster and stuff. Mm-hmm. And my like a TV personality. She was a big model, so she did. Got a, it. You know. Yeah. She's like Chrissy Teigen, but prettier and funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a bitch. I didn't. I didn't mean that. I've had a really great day today. Don't listen to me. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll, I'm still bitter. <laughs> I'm still bitter about the fact that like they, they came out with this like top forty women in comedy or something, and it was like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Amy Schumer, uh, Nikki Glaser, Chrissy Teigen, and I. I was at the gym, and I You're like, like she's off not in comedy. Treadmill. And I was like, what? Well, and she's a judge on the new comedy show, and I I'm know. like. Yeah, but she gave nothing against her personality. I don't seems know really anything fun, about her, but like, but she was critiquing Graham K, who is a fucking good comic, and I was like, dude, like I, I got like angry. I had to turn it off. Yeah, because what she said to I don't know, I, I won't. Yeah, go. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, shut yeah. up before. Uh, well, it, it's it's like you know a lot of. A lot of people have said a lot of things about different shows that are on and who ends up getting, ju- you know, right. becoming a judge. I mean, you you shouldn't be judging anything you're not an expert in. That's period. What, that's what I think. You're I just mean, period. I mean, you should have like a like most of your credits should be in that thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not in ju- a bathing suit. Like I'm not ever going to judge a dance competition because I, I mean, I did dance growing up. Doesn't qualify me to know what the fuck anything is. <laughs> no one will let me judge anything, probably. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I feel like I have no expertise other than like being a smart ass, which is that's a great, that's a good expertise. I to mean, have. It, it is in our business, but it doesn't <laughs> leave you with a lot of options. Like there exactly. is no plan B. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were that young, I mean, obviously you were oh, yeah, living. I totally got. Were you living in Los Angeles? No, I grew up in London. Oh, um, you did grow up in London. Okay. Like, my earliest memories are things like him being dangled out the window on A Fish Called Wanda, like, uh, by Kevin Klein and being, like, pissed. Yeah. And scre- I was four, you know? But yeah. Like, you didn't I, know what I was going on. I didn't understand what acting was for a really long time. Um, we had 16 cats. Speaking of cats. Mm-hmm. My dad's, like, a crazy Holy cat shit. lady, only he's a man <laughs> that occasionally dresses like a woman. Um that was another thing. Like, I remember for, for show and tell in kindergarten, we had to bring in photos of our parents. And he sent me in with a photo of him in, like, a leopard print dress and a blonde wig and Shut high up. heels. And he's holding he me by the ankle with upside you. down, like, and my dress is over my head. Annie Leibowitz took the photo. I mean, it was incredible. It was, yeah. like, behind the scenes of this American Express ad. Um, but there... This school was super uptight. It's like the sister school to where the princes went. So it was like, they're like, well, you know, we were going to put them on the class bulletin board, but now the exhibit is canceled. Thank you. <laughs> like, that was it. Um, it was a, it was a trip. I mean, it still is like, it's weird when the whole world has your dad on a pedestal because I think you put your parents on a pedestal anyway growing up at least mm-hmm. like you think adults know everything and um you know they they have it all figured out yeah and then as you get older you realize <laughs> how little we know <laughs> like, well and it's just interesting because everybody's normal is different like that's your normal yeah. my normal was very different and everybody I've interviewed their normal is very different too so right. it's just like you know even when I've asked 
different people what it was like to grow up with. Um, I recently had Jonathan Kite on, and his uh, brother, his brother used to be his sister. Oh wow! So he had he saw that transformation on take you know go under this um, this transformation happen while he was in like his prime of his life. Wow. So I asked him, you know, what that what was that been. like to experience? Yeah. And he was like, well, it was just my normal. And I'm like, you know, I forget that everybody's normal is just their normal. <laughs> and the normal you know? changes all the time. All the time. Like, yeah. And my parents got married like once a week and I switched schools. And You know, I wouldn't trade any of it. Like I, I'm grateful because it all sort of got me to where I am today, but it definitely has been a wild ride. Yeah. Know? So how long were you in London and when did you move to L.A. finally? Well, we moved to southern Illinois first, yep. uh, then Chicago, then Chicago suburbs, like uh, Lake Bluff, mm -hmm. which, uh, do you know Lake Yeah, Bluff? I know Lake Bluff. Yeah, I lived in Chicago long enough to know. Um, yeah, it's like the ghetto of Lake Forest, but when I say ghetto, yeah. I mean like... <laughs> Kind of <laughs> like the nice it's ghetto. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I've been to Santa Barbara. Goleta would be like the, the ghetto. Less nice. It's not. Yeah. Not exactly hood. Um, <laughs> it's like a lot of white picket fences and housewives and like I think we were the only Democrats in the town. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it was an interesting. I went to Lake Forest for high school for a couple of years and then I got kicked out maybe once or twice. Um, so what happened when you got kicked out? Oh, God. I, f like I, I got in trouble so many times it all sort of blurs together, and I don't know. Like, I always had kind of good grades, so I think they wanted to keep giving me chances, but I lit the dorm on fire. That was an accident. I was boarding oh, 15 fuck. minutes from my house, if that's any indication of how well-behaved I was. <laughs> you were what, 15 minutes? I was going to boarding school 15, 15 minutes, minutes from, your from house. my Oh, house. my gosh. <laughs> my, my mom was like, you're not staying here anymore. And then I would get... This was in high school? Yeah. My freshman year, but I was two years younger for my grade, so I was 12. But I looked 30, because I've always looked 30. Like, <laughs> Actually, now I probably look 40, but whatever. No, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you just if you forever look thirty, at least it took I you a while to grow a into it. In the vent, in the bathroom during study hall, and the cherry fell off, and there was like a lot of dust and lint, and it caught fire. So there was that, and then I hacked the phone system and was selling a code. Like, they this is back when landlines were a thing, mm -hmm. and everyone had like their own landline, but they shut the phones off for certain hours. And I figured out a way that you could dial a special code and be able to dial out mm -hmm. after. And I was selling it to the freshmen for 50 bucks a pop. I actually oh, made a pretty fuck. decent money. You probably made good yeah. Yeah, it was a prep school. Genius. <laughs> yeah, they all had money. Uh, and part of the problem with having a dad who's a comic is, like, he, like he thought that was genius. He, had no, like, he that, didn't, like, that, restrict you from no, doing anything. No. Like, I wrote a paper on why the assignment was stupid once. <laughs> How did you end up in boarding school in the first place? Um, oh, God. I just was, like... I think I have horrible ADD and like we'd moved around so much and I was not happy, I think, but I, I was partying a lot and causing trouble. It was never like any bad Anything intention yeah. trouble, but it was like uh, we did like a consistent amount of trouble that just added up over time. Kind yeah. Of thing. Like I would sneak out like almost every night and it, it was funny because like <laughs> one night I'd set off like a car alarm and all that kind of stuff and like my mom wouldn't wake up but the night that I like was creeping out and totally silent like she would come in the kitchen and I'd be like just getting a glass of milk you know like I <laughs> I was trying to climb up out my bedroom window once and fell and it was right above her bedroom mm -hmm. and uh, I managed to get back upstairs in time to get back into bed and she came in my room and was like did something just fall out the window <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's, it's only like 10 feet and there was like six feet of snow it was right in the middle of winter and I was on ecstasy so I, I mean it was you didn't like, know it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was like and that's what I wonder like growing up with somebody who's in the limelight and like being around other wealthy children was th were things just too accessible like, um I mean it's funny like I never had credit cards I wasn't really given an allowance like I growing up with my mom I, I think was a little bit more normal because I, I lived in London till I was like 11 I think and then we moved to southern Illinois and junior high in Chicago and then there was never a lot of stability per se but um 
Yeah, I mean, I think the craziest part, I rode horses at a top level, uh, and that is a weird sport. I don't yeah. know if you know anything about the equestrian life. I really but don't, like, but it's pretty like... It's basically a sport you put your kid in if like you don't ever want to see them. You have a lot of money, and you don't mind if they maybe die. <laughs> like, oh, it's like fuck. super dangerous and super. Expensive. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Um, Shit. Like, and the look, I know how lucky I am, and I grew up like very comfortably. But like, we were like the poverty line in that sport. Like, yeah, it, it was a obscene. Money. Well, economy's like, a scale. Billionaire. I talk about that all the yeah, time. I mean, like, you know. Oh, it once was you, crazy. And once you enter one part of the scale, it's like you can't go down. Otherwise, you're the has been or you're right. the what, you know, and so you have to like. This remain. is like the 1% of the 1%. It's like all the heiresses and like, and. I can't even imagine that what that world money, is like. Oh, oh my God. Like the 16 year old pulling in in Ferraris, you know. And like, uh, compared to that, I'd say I had relative normalcy. Like, I, my first car was a used Toyota like it wasn't I yeah wasn't getting you weren't that getting kind of thing. spoiled like that yeah um, I mean the horses obviously were a large expense but it was like the one thing keeping me from prison so I think yeah they were like have my dad was happy to to keep paying for that and he was in the UK so he wasn't really able to do much but then he decided to move to Santa Barbara when I was like 14 I think mm -hmm. and so I moved out there to live with him and then he couldn't be in the country because of tax reasons. So I basically lived by myself in Santa Barbara, which was awesome as far as I was concerned at yeah. that age. Cause How like old were you? 14. 14. Fuck. I mean, there was a... So it was kind of crazy. Like, my best friend family was from California. The one She was going to school with me in Lake Forest, and they wanted to move back to California. And my dad owned two houses next door to each other because he some investment... So they wound up moving at the same time as I did. And mm -hmm. So they were kind of supervising. But, like, me and my best friend together were, like... <laughs> Trouble. Yeah. Yeah, of like, course. To this day, bring out the worst in each other, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I actually haven't seen her in a bit now, but, like, uh, all the kids from that town, sorry. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Like, there, there's a huge heroin epidemic there in Santa Barbara uh well I think there to some degree but Lake Forest has been like oh oh yeah I I've lost so many friends in the past few years wow like, you'd never guess I mean it's just one of those they things sweep it under the rug those kinds of things uh, yeah yeah for They'd, sure it's all about keeping if it's up in one town there mm -hmm. but yeah it's like I mean big farm well I won't even get started on that because it's so infuriating like it it all started with the painkillers you know but yeah yeah the whole opiate addiction yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but now that fentanyl is a thing it's like people are dropping like flies it's terrifying yeah um anyway, yeah i've had a few in incidences in my town as well or my friend where circle. were you stoughton wisconsin but oh. like in that region i've had i had one friend pass away last year um and then another friend pass away in Chicago. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, and it's usually from, like, nothing. It's, right. It's usually just because they got something bad. Well, you know, it's not like. Even just a tiny bit of fentanyl, it's so potent. I think mm -hmm. it's a thousand times stronger than heroin. Yeah. Like, if you handle it without rubber gloves, it can seep through your skin and kill you. Like, that's how. That's fucking and crazy. It's like radiation. It. Yeah. It's <laughs> gnarly. Um, there's actually a fascinating episode on, there's a series called Dope on Netflix. It's oh, like yeah, a yeah, series. I've heard about it. And they have the most inside access. I don't know how they get these guys to talk. A lot of them have, like, uh, their voices disguised and, like, they're fully covered up. Like, you wouldn't recognize them. But yeah. they're still, like, cartel guys and, like, mm -hmm. uh, Sicarios and, like, but there's an episode about that. It was mind-boggling. It's, um... And now people are just doing it straight. Yeah. Which I'm is like, crazy. <laughs> crazy. And apparently it's way easier to smuggle into the country because it doesn't have an odor or something like that. Oh, I, so, I didn't even know yeah. that. Anyway. I, so did you start getting into anything, like, really dangerous at, after 14 because you were, like, basically unsupervised? Or were you just kind I was of... I pretty unsupervised. Always? Always, I yeah. would say. Like, um, I mean... At boarding school, I think someone gave me Coke for the first time. I had no idea what it was because I skipped the grade where you have drug ed. 
Oh, yeah. So, I, like, literally, I didn't know it was, like, bad or bad for you or illegal. You just thought it was, like, like, gum. I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, I wanted to be cool. I wanted to have friends. Like, and uh, that was fun. I mean, I think I did, like, the tiniest bit ever. I'm, I may not have even got high, but then we used to do it all the time in the dorms and sneak out and go to the college parties. And yeah. Like, and then it pretty much continued from there. Um, as long as I was riding that always sort of kept me like reined in just enough. But once my dad was like, Oh, I wasn't kidding about university and I had to quit. It got pretty bad. Yeah. Well, like, the thing about living in towns where there's like no real crime <laughs> is that they tend to just, you know, go after like kids that are misbehaving. And I sure. have like a yeah. target on my back. Anyway. And this was still in Illinois. Both. Illinois and uh, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Like, mm -hmm. had I lived in downtown Chicago, like, I would never have been arrested. But yeah, yeah, that was like my hometown. Like, the only times I've ever been in trouble my entire life were in my hometown because yeah. th there was nothing else for the cops to do besides bust our parties. Wait, where is that in Wisconsin exactly? Madison area. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I have a sister in Madison. So we party mm -hmm. up there. I mean, but not. It wasn't like a drug scene. It was just drinking. Mm -hmm. Like it a was so. <laughs> So much beer, yeah. like, and, you know, strip poker <laughs> was, like, the most right. harmless shit ever. I mean, that's <laughs> kind of what we did in Lake Forest, but then, like, yeah, the drugs were a thing, but we were still just playing strip poker and driving around in, like, people's suburbans, and <laughs> Christmas was my favorite, because, you know, those, like, nativity scenes people set up on their front yeah. lawn, like, we would drive, drive around and turn them into, like, orgies. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought was really fun. Courtney um, Sherman grew up out this way um, in Woodland Hills, uh, and she used to she used to fuck with people's or ornaments and stuff too. Yeah. They would like just steal them, <laughs> steal like we, all the. We lines. didn't steal them because I felt like that was illegal. But like, you, what are they going to do if you're just rearranging them? them? <laughs> right. And they can't be like, oh, the donkey's having sex with Joseph. And you're like, no, they're just cuddling. Like, what are you talking about? I thought I looked more comfortable in that right? position. You ever played Tetris? Look at that. Yeah, it just, uh, <laughs> perfect. And then every year there, there was like this statue of a stag in like the center of town. And every year we would spray paint its dick a different color. <laughs> See, this isn't that it's bad like, of stuff. No, no. Like, that's funny right? to me. Yeah. I don't feel like that's, I mean, but you got arrested for that stuff? Well, I, not for that stuff in particular. I didn't ever get, I think I got a ticket for underage drinking. And then, so my stepdad may or may not have been on, on the police commi commissioner's board. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, like, we definitely had lots of talks in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Um, I think he was only on the board because he was, like, the only Democrat that they could find, and they had to have, like, one Democrat or something. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Stupid. Santa Barbara, it was a lot worse because I kind of had a target on my back, too. Um, For what reason? I think my dad, in part. Uh, I'm also easy to spot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm six foot one, and I was always, like... So when I first moved to Santa Barbara, I had a really good fake ID, and I would go downtown all the time. And then they published this article on, like, the front page of Santa Barbara magazine. It said my, my real age. And I was so mad at my dad. I was like, you ruined my social life. Like, oh, he, like, shit. didn't understand. I mean, ugh, poor guy. I was such a shithead. Uh, <laughs> like, my 16th birthday had an open bar because he didn't know <laughs> about the drinking age. I wasn't going to tell him. Like, yeah. He can do his own research, but we got a few phone calls about that one. Oh, um, shit. Well, how did he not know? Just because in Europe, it's just not a thing? Not really. Yeah. I mean, it, as long as you're with your parents, you could always kind of drink. And, like, if you can see over the bar, pretty much, they would serve you. Yeah. I think it's 18 is the... The legal age there. Yeah, well, in, in Wisconsin, they, like, let you drink with your parents as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, I think it's a good thing in a lot of ways, but, I mean, more so, I think he just thinks that he's above the laws. The laws. <laughs> I mean, Him and Tom Selleck. A, yeah, he's, he's a celebrity. <laughs> That's funny, because Hannah's, a, <laughs> Hannah, who's, uh, sorry, Tom's daughter, is a good friend of mine. We rode horses together. Oh, no way. And I just, f I feel like they would be buddies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they ever met because like, it's, it's not like my dad came to the horse shows very often. Right, right, he right. He just paid the bills. Uh, <laughs> but 
Hannah's awesome. She's a great rider too, but um, we'd always laugh that like our dads had the two famous mustaches like oh, on the other yeah. side of the pond. <laughs> I think Tom's is much more impressive, but I never realized why my dad had a mustache until I saw him shave it. And I was like, holy fuck. What? It's the longest upper lip I've ever seen. Really? Like, it's like at no actual lip, but just like, it just lit, just all up. <laughs> yeah. So he needs a mustache. We did it for a gag at Just for Laughs at the Sydney Opera House. He was doing like a mock telethon. It was pretty funny, actually. So he shaved it and put on a really realistic looking fake one. Mm -hmm. And we had someone call in and be like, I'll give you $5 if you'll get rid of your mustache. So he goes like this. <laughs> and then he puts it right back on. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, fuck yeah. It was a, a good it's one. It's cool that you guys have such a good relationship. And then, like, at what point did you start transitioning or just, uh, like, transitioning into this world yourself, the comedy world? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I honestly did not ever think I was going to go into it because I, I shied away from it pretty hard because of him and the shadow and, like, yeah. really being kind of... Um, not wanting to be a part of the fame or like uh like it, it it was pretty ugly growing up because the uk press is i think even worse and we had no privacy and like all of my escapades like i got sober at 23 um but and you haven't drank since right no nothing nothing for 12 years yeah, yeah. um but some you know the british press got a hold of some of the arrests and things like that and um it I literally couldn't have got a job I mean I tried I couldn't get a job anywhere I couldn't get back into school like because the first thing that happens especially if you have a name like Camilla Cleese like if you're you know Sarah Johnson there's a million Sarah Johnson so like you yeah. type the name in Google like but you don't have another come up, you don't know it's <laughs> Yeah. For sure, which Sarah Johnson you don't did have it. You any named doppelgangers. Whereas me, yeah. like, not only am I six foot one, which doesn't help because, like, physically. It's impossible, yeah. But, like, there's no one else named Camilla Cleese. Like, mm -hmm. Cleese isn't a real last name. It's cheese. They changed the H to an L. Thank fucking God. What? Yeah. It was supposed to be cheese? Camilla Chloe Cheese. What? Thank you, Lord. I, I got bullied bad enough. Being oh, like my God. That's, that is such a difference. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Sorry but if you're going to change it, why not change it to something cool? Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I suppose they just had to, you know, basically didn't have I'm to really change James, many, jo many documents. Well, 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 what's funny is if you write it out in capital letters, sometimes the L can look like an H. So I still get it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Camilla cheese. Oh, my gosh. Camilla Chloe cheese. They would have loved you in my hometown. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> the cheese hut. We were actually pretty, like, my stepdad's house is pretty close to the border of Wisconsin by mm -hmm. the um, naval base. I don't know if you know where that is. But I don't. Like, I don't. I should know that, but like I don't. These AWOL sailors would go running through our yard all the time, and my <laughs> mom would be like, do you need money for the train? I'm like, that's a felony. Yeah. But it was awesome. Fuck, that's yeah. cool. So when did what made you get sober? What was the catalyst for that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I literally, like, I think I had, like, two and a half DUIs, and then I got busted with a bunch of blow. And while I was waiting to go to court for that, I got, like, another. <laughs> the worst part was I wasn't even driving drunk. Like, I, I went to a friend's how uh she was going to northwestern and i was going to stay in her dorm room and i'd park my car and we took a taxi to the bar we took a taxi home mm -hmm. and i realized it was in a tow zone so i went to move my car just down the street but i moved it the wrong way down a one-way street and like within 75 feet or something like ridiculous i managed to get pulled over and i remember sitting in the jail cell at that time and i was just like this is it's like a sign from the universe. Like I'm, I was looking at like serious time at that point because it, it was such it was a your many offenses. Dominant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
I was also dating the district attorney in Santa Barbara, which is a whole other story. <laughs> or the deputy, yeah, whatever. Uh, but I remember just like sitting on the floor and being like, I have to remember like every um, sensory or uh, how this feels like emotionally, but also like what it looks like and how sick I feel because I was like coming down hard and drunk and like, and I sat there for hours just being like, remember this, remember this, and like make the association with like, this is what happens when you drink. Like, yeah. It never is just like, oh, one beer. It's like, oh, one beer, and now I want some blow. And now I'm, uh, and three days later, I'm like, fuck. What the fuck? Wh why am I in Vegas? Like, <laughs> uh, and somehow it kind of worked. Like, I, I knew that a lot of it stemmed from like trauma and just not wanting to deal with those feelings I think but one of the the problems with like you know drinking or doing drugs to like cope with that is that you wind up putting yourself in more jeopardizing situations and then like worse shit happens yeah and then you have to party more to deal with that and it's like this horrible vicious cycle that snowballs and I was done though like I'd <laughs> I had a you good kind of done. Yeah, like, yeah. I felt like I'd I was been to say, every like... party that I needed to go to. Like I, I accidentally took mushrooms. I went to the Vanity Fair Oscars party. I've been to like. That I've, sounds I've done really it. fun. It was. It was. If you're gonna do mushrooms, I that's was a sitting place at a table it. with like. You're just hugging everybody. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> no, I just was sitting there and I was so quiet. And my dad was like, "You're awfully quiet. What's going on?" And I was like. Mm. And Anthony Hopkins was at the table. I must have just stared at him for like three hours. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. When, what year did you start doing stand-up then? Did you start immediately after you became sober? Oh, no. I started late. I wish I'd started sooner. I started writing and like acting really just... I'd had a casting director um, tell me I was too tall to act. I feel like my dad might have paid her to say that or something. Like, just to deter you? <laughs> I, so I just thought it wasn't really an option. Um, and I loved acting, but I started writing comedy. My dad asked if I wanted to co-write this one-man show he had to do in New Zealand while I was in university. And uh, I was like, sure. And I think we both thought I would like make the coffee and type because he doesn't know how to do those things. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> But I wound up contributing more than uh, either of us anticipated, I think. And I, I wrote my way into the show because I didn't want to go back to school. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, six foot one blonde. He looks a tiny bit like John Cleese, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> genius. Genius. And then I wrote in a part for a hot guy and, and my best friend. Um, <laughs> that was what, <laughs> This is when I was 21 or 22. Oh, and my gosh. Like, that's amazing. We toured in New Zealand for six months, and that's kind of when I got the bug, but I always thought I would just write, and I started working with him a lot. Um, and then I went back to university, but then my mom got sick, and I, I spent a lot of time going back and forth and looking after her. Um, and then, yeah, I, I kind of always just thought I would write, but I was in a sketch group with Sarah Tiana, mm -hmm. and... I saw her do stand-up, and that was the first time that I remember thinking to myself, like, oh. Like, Maybe I can do I that. Well, it's weird. Like, I didn't know any female comics. Yeah. And the only ones I did know were, like, super, um, like, cartoony. Like, not, yeah, just... And watching Sarah, I'm like, okay, here's someone that I can, like, relate to that I, I'm friends with, like, and she's super funny and really dark mm -hmm. and, like... Um, that's when I kind of wanted to try it. I think it took me another year to like get the courage up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to actually do it. I remember my legs like shaking. I still get stage fright. It's sometimes. nice that you went through a whole comedy career being sober, though. It's rare. I'm that glad that I happens. started. Oh my god, it would be so bad. Because my first my first show in Chicago I ever did, I was drunk for because I was so nervous. Yeah. And I would imagine it's easy for it to become a crutch. You know? Well, and I've I've only bombed really bad like to the point where it hurt my soul four times in my life and two of them were when I was really? drunk mm. you know you might have a set that's not ideal yeah. but f I've had four bombs that I still get like nightmares about 
And so, which isn't <laughs> terrible. That's not terrible. No. But, those, but there, it was, it's like I save them up, and when I go down, I go down real hard. Oh, <laughs> I had a great one in Aurora, <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. I don't know if you ever played that club. No, I, but I've played um, like, Southern Illinois. Yeah. And it's tough. Oh. That, well, was one of my, that was one of my bombs. It was like a super Christian town. That was one of my bombs. It was, a, it was um, Decatur. Illinois. That's near where I lived in Southern Illinois. We were like 45 minutes outside yeah. of Decatur. That was one of my worst bombs of my life um, in Decatur. <laughs> well, they don't even speak English. So what are you going <laughs> to... Right? It was like... So they don't speak Spanish I either. They just like don't speak language. Yeah. I walked on stage <laughs> and it was just all white-haired women. And I was like, this is going to be really nasty. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I opened with like an abortion joke. Which then... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, yep, Not yep. open, but, like, within the first Couple 90 minutes, seconds. Yep, yep, and then I just... did 14 minutes to silence. Oh, yeah. I had 35 <gasps> bombing the whole but time. But the funny thing is I start to giggle. Like, I can't, like, the less they laugh, the more it makes me laugh. Yeah. It's a really bad response. No, it's have, actually like, pretty what's good. what's wrong with her? Like, no, it's why actually, is she hysterically Like, laughing? what else are you going to do? Um, okay, so <clears throat> how long have you been doing stand-up now? Uh... Six and a half years. I Six guess? and a half years. Seven, okay. And maybe. at what point did you start actually like touring with your dad? Because that's kind of oh, a I cool. I don't do stand up with him. You don't do stand up. You don't no. do like he doesn't do stand up as well, and you tour. He doesn't do, do stand up. Thank fucking god. He I does, was wondering he how calls that it his stand up, and I'm like, no, 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 no. No, it's just it's your you. one man show. One man show. Okay. You have a teleprompter. So when you tour with him, he's doing the one man show, and you're just help. Uh, like, well, lately it's been what I call the lazy show. It's my new career goal. Uh, he shows one of his movies. And then we he rolls in at like nine p.m. Yeah. <laughs> after the mo- as the movie's ending, and I go do stand up beforehand. Usually, like I, I'll book spots ahead mm-hmm. of time, and I show up at the last possible minute. And the tour manager tries to kill me as I run on the stage, and I interview him for an hour and a half. But it's like audience questions on note That's cards. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean. He had some bad interviewers, and that's why they asked me to come and do it, because I know every joke and story and anecdote. And you know how to lead I him into all of, of it. Mm-hmm. And even though the questions are from the audience, like, I know which ones to ask and yeah. which have funny answers, and I have no respect. So it's like, <laughs> it makes it a lot more entertaining, I think, for the audience, because they're if the interviewer is too reverential, they're not going to ask him questions like, yeah. how did you lose your virginity? Not that I... Like, I'll do that, but then I'll leave the stage. Yeah, you just cut your muff yourself. Like, <laughs> um, and he, like, throws things at me constantly. And, um, you know, we f- are, like, bicker, but, like, it's funny. Yeah. You know, it's almost... That sounds like really cool. It is, except for living on a bus with him. That's, like... A nightmare. <laughs> it's, like, my worst nightmare. I could never live on with He my has the thermostat for... set at 82. Oh, shit. Yeah. Why? Is he cold-blooded? I don't know. I don't understand. He has plenty of insulation. And him, like, built in. And <laughs> I'll, he'll be, like, sitting there in a T-shirt. I'm like, can we compromise? Put it at 78. And you put on a long sleeve shirt. And he's like, whose tour is this? I'm like, you're such an asshole. Because there's only so many clothes you can take off. Especially yeah. when you're on a bus with, the, with, with your, your dad. dad. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, I'm living basically in, you know, my room is like he's got the back third of the bus with a queen size bed and his own bathroom and like he has a hotel wherever we pull in. Mm-hmm. And my room it's not a room, it's a hallway that I share with three grown men. Um yep. and I overpack because I'm a girl. And yep. I, I don't even overpack like that much. It's just that the cargo bays never have room, so I have to put my suitcase at the t- the foot. I have my dog. Yeah. And it's like the size of a coffin, basically. <laughs> um, and 82 degrees. Oh, yeah. It sounds delicious. <laughs> sounds amazing. Well, what do you have coming up that you're excited about or anything you want to plug? Um, I'm going to take a nap this afternoon. <laughs> I'm super excited about that. Uh, <laughs> no. What do I have coming up? This will be out a week from Tuesday. A week a from week tomorrow. week from tomorrow. Oh, gosh. Can you just look at my social media? Because <laughs> my memory is... <laughs> what is your social media? I did too many drugs as a child. Uh, at Camilla Clees, everything. Because I am the only one, like we talked about before. That's, That's like really the easy. one upside. I could get my <laughs> own handle for everything. But yep. 
I also can't blame my shit on anyone else. Anyone else. Unfortunately. Yep. I have Neil Patrick Harris to blame my stuff on, so, because I'm the other oh MPH. Gosh. MPH? <laughs> I'm the only, he's the only other MPH. Well, I'm sure there are more, but. Did you see what I <laughs> tweeted at you? There was something about MPH trending, and I assumed it was about you for whatever oh, reason. It's like, funny. It, it was. Uh, I mean, it could have been. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but, like, I tweeted at you being like, it wasn't about you because I, when I looked at it, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. And I, I, Thank you for thinking that I'm, a, I'm more important than he is. Um, <laughs> well, wanna, you are to me. I try to, I want to work with him so bad one day and then just be like MPH squared. Um, but you can find me at NPH comedy on all social media. You can follow the podcast at future role model on Instagram or at role model pod on Twitter and I have a tour coming up starting this week in the Midwest. So when this comes out, I will be uh, in the first third of that. So come and see me perform in Wisconsin and Chicago. Go to my website, nphcomedy.com backslash T-I-X for tickets. Any closing remarks? Um, yeah, we didn't get to the part where I'm a role model, but I don't know if I'm actually there in my life yet. So <laughs> maybe maybe you'll have me back as a guest. I will, when yeah. I'm, like killing when it. you're, <laughs> but you don't have to be a role model yet. That's why it's you know <laughs> that's why it's future. Right. We're all working towards it. <laughs> I mean, you are you have a lot of comedians as guests. Mm -hmm. like, people don't typically. I try to mostly just have comedians. Eventually, I want to branch out into like athletes and authors and stuff like that. Mm. But comedians tend to be the only people that'll actually share really shit that that's people don't cool want to share. About comics, like you, we talk about everything. And yeah, I was gonna have it's an been actress. Sort of a godsend for me. I feel like like is it's nice to be able to walk up to your friends and be like, God, I'm depressed today, and like. There's no other career you could be in where people wouldn't just judge you exactly. for like saying that. But yeah, the openness is really something I cherish. Exactly. Amongst our friends. Yeah. So in closing, um, thank you for being here, and I hope your dog's okay. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs>